guys, so I'm currently in Tokyo. Sorry I didn't vlog much today. It's been so busy, but I'm going to go to a hotel. So I'm meeting Patrick and Patsis. I'm gonna be doing a photo shoot tomorrow, so, so I'm just gonna meet up with them and have dinner. We're gonna have ramen probably. I think I've made it. Um, where is it? Maybe down here. So I got my SIM card, which I'll talk more about when I get home. So I'm at a ramen restaurant now with Francis and oh, Francis there and Patrick. And they are photographers, so we're just having dinner now. And they gave us like little aprons to wear in case our clothes get dirty. Hey guys, so I'm back in my apartment now and I just want to say sorry that I only started vlogging like towards the night time mainly because I had like a lot of business meetings today and had a lot of stuff I had to do so I didn't really have time to vlog but anyway today I actually got a lot done so I'm pretty happy and I finally got a sim card for my phone so I am so excited about that because it's been annoying me for quite a while that I didn't have a sim card so I just want to talk a little bit about getting a sim card in Japan so I guess this is what this video is gonna be about Getting a SIM card in Japan, let me tell you guys, it's a pain in the bum. I don't know why it's so hard to get a SIM card in Japan. Like, it was worse before, so it's actually gotten a lot better now. But it's still a little bit of a pain to get a SIM card. If you want just like a data SIM, it's very easy to get just a data SIM. But if you want a SIM card with like a phone number attached, so voice calling and all, it's actually pretty annoying to get. So what happened on Friday when I first arrived in Japan, I went to a big camera and I asked them if I can buy a SIM card. So they gave me like all the options and then I was like, I want one with like voice calling, so I want an actual phone number as well. So they were like, okay, they gave me like the phone plans, I chose one, I was happy with. And then when it actually came to signing the contract, they were like, can we see your resident card? So if you're staying in Japan, I think for more than three months or six months, I can't remember what it is, you need a resident card and you get it straight away when you pass through immigration at the airport. But once you get your card, you have to go to like the city hall of the area you are staying in and then you have to register your address. Now I only just arrived in Japan that day so I didn't have time to register my address yet. So what happened was they looked at my card and they were like oh you need to actually have your address on here so we can't sell you a sim card unless you put your address on here. So that was a bit annoying because you know in Australia if you want a sim card it's so easy to get one like you can just go down to a store and just buy one for two dollars. In Japan unfortunately it doesn't work that way. So I did go to like my city hall city center and then I got that all done, got my address on there and then I gave them my card this time. So the process was actually pretty easy. So first off you choose your plan and I chose a plan that was 2,200 yen a month and I get 5 gigs of data and I also get some calls. I don't know how much I get but I do get some calls. I actually don't plan to call anyone because if I do, I probably call them through line anyway. And so you guys may ask why do I even bother getting a phone number if I'm only going to use data? Well it's mainly because if people want to call me, like companies want to call me, it's just easier that way that I have a phone number. So I chose my plan and all and I decided to go with a plan from Big Camera. Big Camera is like a massive electronic store in Japan and you can find them like in the major cities like Shibuya, Shinjuku, stuff like that. So what happens is that you have to fill in all the details and you also have to give them a credit card. So I heard from from other people that they had to pay by credit card, you couldn't pay by debit. So I put in my credit card details and then after all the processing was done, they told me to wait about half an hour for them to make my SIM card. So I went around in the store and walked around a little bit. So I came back after 30 minutes and then they had my SIM card ready. They explained to me how to use it. They explained to me I had to download an app um, to use it properly. And then they explained to me if I want cheaper calls, I have to call through this app. So they told me that phone calls will cost half the price it usually would if you go through this app. Unfortunately that app you can only get through the Japanese iTunes store and I have an Australian one and it's just a pain if I have to change it so I don't really want to do that. So I thought it doesn't really matter to me anyway because I'm not going to make any calls. I'm only going to be receiving calls and if I do use my phone it's for data. So yes I got my SIM card on my phone and it started working straight away and it's got LTE internet which is like 
oh it's like amazing for me it's like really fast and in Australia I think the most we got is 4G and I still use 3G in Australia so when I first came to Japan I was actually using a pocket Wi-Fi so I was using the Wii Max speed Wi-Fi and to be honest I really don't recommend it the main reason why I rented out the Wi-Fi was because I wanted to just to test how fast it would be in my area and if it was really good I'll go pocket Wi-Fi instead of getting a SIM card but I realized that there's no point getting a pocket Wi-Fi if I've got internet at home already and when I go out I probably won't use the internet that much anyway and also the Wii Max pocket Wi-Fi it isn't really that fast when you're underground or when you're on trains it kind of cuts out the signal which is really annoying so I rented this out for about a week and I'm gonna return it in two days time it's actually really expensive to rent it out it cost me like I think $70 for a week so definitely I am returning that but actually if you are staying in Japan long term and if you really really want a pocket Wi-Fi then you can get a pocket Wi-Fi for much cheaper I think you can get some for like maybe 3,000, 4,000 yen a month which is pretty good the only problem I found with pocket Wi-Fi and the reason why it took me so long to actually choose one was that now in Japan if you want to get a pocket Wi-Fi almost all of them have a limit some have like a 7 gig limit and once you go over 7 gigs then it goes down to like dial up speed and then some of them have like limits so if you use maybe like 3 gigs in 3 days then they'll slow your internet down which is a bit ridiculous I know I can use 3 gigs in 3 days very easily so unfortunately pocket Wi-Fi I don't think it's a good option anymore yeah if you're moving to Japan I definitely recommend just getting internet in your own apartment and then just getting a phone with some data on it so that's it for today I'm actually going to like clean up and edit some videos shower and get ready for tomorrow so thank you guys for watching again and I'll see you guys in the next video bye